Hello, my name is Lee Presser. This is my show. I speak frequently to very interesting people. Some of these conversations are so exciting, so intellectually stimulating, I thought others might like to listen in. This is the reason we started recording Conversation with Lee Presser. Welcome to Conversation with Lee Presser. Drug Abuse Resistance Education, known to the public as DARE, is the International Substance Abuse Prevention Education Program that seeks to prevent young people from using illegal drugs, tobacco products, and alcohol. The program also attempts to steer the young away from violent behavior and gang membership. DARE was founded in Los Angeles in 1983 as a joint initiative of former LAPD Police Chief Daryl Gates and the LA Unified School District. Our guest today is Officer Christopher Williams, Senior DARE Officer for the Edwardsville Police Department. He is with us today to discuss his work with students, parents, and the Edwardsville School District personnel. Officer Williams works as a patrol officer for 10 years before he attended DARE Training School in Oklahoma City. He has focused on DARE student training for the past 10 years. Classes are taught to both public and parochial schools. In public schools, he teaches the DARE program to fifth graders. At the parochial schools, he teaches kindergarten, second, fourth, and fifth graders. To earn the money for the DARE program operations, Officer Williams is the coordinator of the DARE car show. Today, we will be discussing the importance of the DARE program. Officer Christopher Williams, welcome to Conversation. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> well, let's start at the end of that, mm -hmm. what I just said, about the DARE car show, yes. which you think is... Uh, is really important. Then we're going to get into the DARE program yes. and explain to people what that is. But this is an annual event where you earn the money for the DARE program, right? Yes, yeah, correct. Go ahead and tell um, us about this. As of right now, Officer Joy Davis is the coordinator. Uh, I'm moving on to another position. But uh, the third Sunday in August at Edgeville High School, we have our DARE car show. We've outgrown every other parking lot in the city, so we have to have it at the high school now. And really, that's where we make all of our money for our program. Last year, we raised uh, a little over $34,000 for our program. All the money raised goes back into our program to give the educational supplies to our students, their T-shirts, their uh, certificates, and things of that nature. For what, from what are you earning money, this $34,000? Yeah, that's, that's a lot. lot of, it is. That's a lot of money from a car show. Yes. Uh, vendors have to come in. We have vendors come in. They can you know, sell their you know, stuff there. We have concessions. We also have most of our money is raised through our registration fees when people want to come in and show or display their vehicles. Mm -hmm. So you're charged for the for the for participation yes. of the vehicles yes. and charged for the vendors yes. to be there, like a slice of the pie, or yes. just no, just a straight flat fee. Just for flat that. fees. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you want to be there, pay Correct. us, and then you got a spot. And then we have other vendor or other companies throughout the city that give, donate money to our program as well. Which they think is a very worthy cause. Yes, I mean, we're very ingrained within the community, so I think that's, uh, that shows how much uh, they appreciate our program as well. Okay, so that's really important. That'll be on August 21st. Yes. And if it's raining, then August 28th, a week later. Yes, and again, Officer Davis is that coordinator now for that program. Okay. Now, um, let's move back to the beginning. Yes. The, uh, the D.A.R.E. program. Um, Maybe some people have heard of it, mm -hmm. or I should say most people have right. heard the term DARE, but they might not understand what DARE is and what it actually does. So why don't you just educate us from the beginning? Okay. Well, we started ours in 1990, so we've just finished and concluded our 25th anniversary of our DARE program in the school district uh, and parochial schools. You know, we're not here to teach kids how to use drugs. We're here to show kids those effects of those drugs on their well, bodies. Who said that you were? Did somebody say you were well, there teaching you know, we them how? Well, you know, we have people out there that says that the program doesn't work. So, you know, we're not about that. We're showing the effects on their bodies. And more importantly, I think our program shows the, the decision-making process and how to make proper and healthy decisions when you're approached or asked to, you know, do drugs or commit violence. Mm -hmm. And that's what our program's about. Okay. So, um, you're talking to fifth, you yes. personally are talking to fifth graders in the public school yes. system. Uh -huh. <clears throat> but you're not a teacher, right? No, I'm an instructor, I'm not a teacher, right? Right. So you have been invited into the school district by the 
by the school district, yes, right, to yes. participate in this program? Right. Now, our first lesson, we have to give the students a student participation form. I sign it, the teacher signs it, the student signs it, and most importantly, the parents sign it. And now, what the does parents, this thing say? Uh, it gives the what their our expectations of the students are, what they have to do. You know, they make a commitment not to do drugs or commit violence. They also have to write a dare essay at the end of the program that shows what they've learned over those ten weeks. But again, most importantly, those parents have to sign that. They have to allow us to teach their kids. And over the last ten years, I've had approximately five students not take the dare program, which I think is a very you know it says something about our program as well. What was the reasoning for not? Um, you know, th that the parents didn't want them to learn how to do drugs. Was well, that it? Well, you know, I think really, I respect their decision as a parent. You know, if they don't want their son or daughter to take dare, that's you know, that's their decision. I usually don't delve too much into the reason why they don't want to have their sons or daughter take the program. I just simply respect their decision. Okay. So they make the parent makes the decision, yes. and that's and that's that. Yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> have you? noticed during the years that you've been doing this that when you're talking to a fifth grader they're already involved in drugs or alcohol? No, not at fifth grade. Uh, I, I look at some have issues with bullying. Uh, that's a new program that we had that several years ago we've added that to our curriculum. What, what bullying. Oh, bullying. Uh, bullying, yes. Uh, that's one that we've added. So that to me is probably what they really have issues with. Most fifth graders don't have to deal with, you know, drinking alcohol or smoking tobacco or something like that or using tobacco. Uh, more than likely, it is those acts of violence they have to deal with. So for fifth graders, it's not too much of an issue. But most important, we do show the effects on their bodies so mm -hmm. that when they get into high school and they're pressured even more then to use tobacco or alcohol, they know those effects on their bodies. What's the usual response from the kids? You know, for fifth graders, um, they still respect a lot of police officers. So it, it's very positive. Uh, I absolutely love teaching the fifth graders. It, it's fun. They're very energetic. Uh, fifth graders today have a lot more information that they get as opposed to 25 years ago. So we have to keep, constantly update our program as well and keep it real and relevant for them. Mm -hmm. What kind of things would a fifth grader ask about? I mean, like, it, it, I know you have a program you're teaching, right. mm -hmm. but all of a sudden some kid asks something that, like, Whoa, didn't expect that. Right. Well, one thing we do is they can ask questions of us and they put in a dare box. And at the beginning of class, I answer those questions. Sometimes they don't want them read out loud. It may be something very personal. But a lot of questions are, you know, what's the worst drug out there? And when I say, well, they're all bad. Now, we also make delineation between, you know, medicines, which are good drugs, and the bad ones that can harm them, which are illegal. So, you know, they, they talk about that quite a bit as well. So, you know, a lot of it's always geared toward me being a police officer. Because my first lesson, I would tell them, I am a police officer first, dare officer second. Mm -hmm. There must be, I know that there is confusion about marijuana mm -hmm. at this point. Yes. And the state of Illinois, which you're teaching in, um, is considering the idea of legalizing, um, I, I guess, small amounts, or not legalizing, decriminalizing, which small says right. to... I guess says to everybody, including fifth graders, that hey, not so bad. Is this becoming an issue in the minds of young people? Well, several years ago, now we're on a third revision of the DARE program. Our second edition was, we did talk about marijuana those effects. Our third re revision of this, we don't talk about marijuana, though we can if it's brought up. I can still tell them all the effects on their bodies. You know, and some of the reasons why people use it for medical purposes. You know, it's to help them because of that illness they have. However, it also can create that, that cancer in their body as well. So it, it's, it's a give or take. And I tell them it's just as bad. I mean, there's still a bad and poor effects on them as well. But again, a lot of them don't bring that up too much. We do discuss it for medical purposes, but then after that, we move on to another topic. Mm -hmm. When you say medical, I mean, how- Medical marijuana, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, what, what is said about medical marijuana? I, I, I mean, just instruct us, I mean, mm -hmm. what, what would you say Fifth grade, like, well, why is med right. medical marijuana? What, what is that? Well, you know, obviously, it, it's it, you know, fact that you know you can smoke marijuana for you know your medical purpose, whatever that medical reason you have. And if you're going through chemo, radiation, you know, obviously, you lose your appetite. And I even tell with my own personal, with my father going through chemotherapy for his cancer, lose appetite. Well, if you smoke marijuana, you kind of get that appetite back. Oh, so, so see, you taught yes. me something. Well, I, you know, you know I, it is, I've you heard do, of medical you do get marijuana, the munchies, right? And I had 
I didn't put two and two mm -hmm. together. So it's. But there's also those negative effects on your body by smoking the marijuana as well. Mm -hmm. So you know, I always tell them that it's it's a personal choice for them if it's legalized for them. You know, mm -hmm. for medical reasons. But the main thing is that you know. I, I always really try to gear it towards the first two things that they'd be offered, which is tobacco or, or alcohol. Mm -hmm. And then we, you know, I really try to gear it towards that as well. So m alcohol and tobacco are still primary. As their gateway drugs, yes. As gateway mm -hmm. drugs, uh, starters. Yes, it is, yes. <laughs> yeah, and where, again, where is a fifth grader coming up with alcohol? I understand tobacco, you, right. know, you snitch one from mm -hmm. Mom's purse, mm -hmm. or, or you know, or dad, right. you know, leaves it around on the right. table. And you you get a cigarette out of that. Right. Okay. Well, it's pretty relevant. Either it'd be at the home somewhere for alcohol or tobacco. So that's one of the reasons why um, that we still talk about that. And again, it's very easy to get. Although the laws on you know, once you're caught with the tobacco or alcohol underage, you know, those laws are a little more stringent now than they were years ago. So we, we're, you know, we're a lot you know more zero tolerance on those as well. I'm just thinking back to my own youth. Mm -hmm. I, I, I tell this story sometimes, you know, when I was 13, you know, my, my grandmother was a great entertainer. Mm -hmm. She had this big silver box, you know, and you flip it up and there's like several different varieties of right. cigarettes. And of course, this is, we're talking, you know, in the 1960s, um, you know, and everybody smoked right. at that time. And so I grabbed one and went out behind the garage and you know, lit the thing up. And <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> nearly choked to death. Right. That was that was about it. I think I tried it one more time a couple of years later, same result, mm -hmm. and uh, never had smoked before. So I never could understand, you know, how people got past right. that and, or even wanted to. Well, I, I talked to them about, you know, how all those effects in their body. I mean, do they want yellow teeth? Do they want more colds, upper respiratory problems? Do they want to have, want to break the law if they're smoking underage or drinking underage? You know, they always say no. And I said, you know what? When you start, decide, or if you decide to use tobacco or alcohol, I'm not going to be there. But hopefully everything you learn in DARE will help you make that correct decision. Mm -hmm. So hopefully from that point, you know, they, they know which path they want to go down. You know, well, it's interesting that you, you, you know, you talk about underage smoking, underage. There was, when we were young, there mm -hmm. was none of that. I mean, right. it was like, you know, it wasn't a matter of law. It was a matter of, uh, you know, uh, practice. Mm -hmm. Well, and again, I think with the law is changing more and more, because one of the things that we as DARE officers do, we do alcohol and tobacco compliance checks within Edwardsville to make sure that clerks are upholding the law and not selling to underage drinkers or underage, uh, you know, minors for tobacco or alcohol. So it's one and of the were they? Uh, we, in the past we have. We have, uh, you know, clerks have sold alcohol or tobacco to our agents because we hire kids uh, to go into these stores or the restaurants and see if they will sell them. We have and we go and we cite them. So again, you know, that's from our DARE program and our DARE offices that we do that. But looking at that, it's always, it's, it's always, I always tell the kids after the fact. I said, well, we're going to hire these kids, and then I t I'll tell you after we do this operation whether the kids, you know, the clerks sold to our, our students. Who are you telling this to? To our, my fifth grade students. Ah, okay. So, and they're always amazed at that, how someone could break the law and sell, you know, tobacco or alcohol to someone who's underage. Mm -hmm. So, again, it's a reinforcement of those effects of alcohol and tobacco on their bodies. And is, um, just sidebar, mm -hmm. is, there, is the punishment for selling this against the store or against the individual? It's both. We can cite the clerk and the store. Uh -huh. the so the so the owners of the company have yes. a uh, a real. They have an interest in yes. making sure this doesn't happen. As exactly. Well. Mm -hmm. Not just the, not just the clerks. Yes. And is there any real? I mean, punishment or is it like a hundred dollar fine? It's a fine. Or? It's it's a city ordinance fine. Yeah. So I have the money to pay. Well, mm -hmm. of course, that that's kind of dumb because they're not really making money off of that, are they? They're right. just selling it and putting it in the till. Mm -hmm. So, all right, so you're working on alcohol, tobacco mm -hmm. first, right. trying to make young people understand right. that these are not healthy things for them to Choices, get into. Choices, correct. And then, then you move over to drugs? Uh, those are the two main drugs we talk about, alcohol and tobacco, but really our D.A.R.E. program is a lot about decision-making processes. One of the first things we teach them, it's another acronym, uh, to define their problem, assess their choices, I mean, what choices do they have, respond by picking a choice and then they need to evaluate their decision mm -hmm. and we always tell them when you evaluate don't just simply tell me that you made a good choice but tell me why you made that choice I want them to think through that process so it's, it's the dare decision-making process 
we move on to stress and how stress can affect their bodies both physically and emotionally. Because fifth graders are put under a lot of stress, both sports and school, after school activities. So they've got a lot going on within their lives. So we kind of deal with that as well. And we talk about peer pressure and how to respond to peer pressure. Because kids, once again, are peer pressure a lot, both internally, if they want to do better on the sports team or in band or orchestra, or even their schoolwork, but they're also peer pressured by their friends. And I tell them, I said, I throw a situation out to them. I said, you're spending the night at a friend's house. It's 2.30 in the morning. Your friend wants you to sneak out of the house and go roam the neighborhood. Well, I said, do you say anything about drugs? I said, no, I didn't say anything about drugs. But you can still make and use the dare decision-making process to make the correct decision. Yeah, is that a poor choice to be out exactly. wandering around mm -hmm. at 2 o'clock in the morning? Yes. Now, you say you've been doing this, um, let's see, since 2006. 2006, yes. <coughs> and now it's, <coughs> excuse me, 2016. So a number of the children that you talk to, they're, mm -hmm. they're adults now. Yes. Have you gone back and talked to them as adults just to double check and mm -hmm. see, did what we do right. then have an impact on you? You know, I do. I've seen, I've seen quite a few of them. Just last Saturday at graduation was one of my classes. I knew a lot of them had just graduated from Edgeville High School. So a lot of them I've known has gone on. Uh, are going on to college and everything else, making those right decisions. Now, have they tried alcohol or tobacco? I don't know. You know, I don't follow them that closely, but to me, if you're going on to college and you've gotten good grades and you're an Honor Society member, it seems to me you've made right choices. Mm -hmm. The reason I ask that mm -hmm. question is that if you go to the, uh, to Wikipedia, mm -hmm. to the, uh, to the DARE site, yes. that at the top there's a lot of what we have talked about here yes. in this first 15 minutes. Um, and, but at the bottom, as you keep going, scrolling down, there's all these complaints about DARE. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it seemed strange to me. I mean, it almost seemed like some of the complaint, complaints would indicate that how dare you say that drugs are bad? Right. Um, or how dare you tell children that if they spot someone who's using drugs to mention it mm -hmm. to uh, to the dare officer right you know like you know like oh my god they're they're little nazi informers or right. some such thing and um you know the, the part especially about you know if you're uh, like they're pro-drug I mean, yes many of these comments mm -hmm. seem almost pro-drug can you comment on that well you know, first thing when we talk about our alcohol and tobacco our first thing i say you know if mom and dad are having a drink at dinner they're of age that is their decisions. If mom and dad are smoking a cigarette, if they're of age, that's their decision. I don't need to know that, okay? But you can talk to your parents about those unhealthy effects on their body. Um, I, 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 that's none of my business. Where I make it my business, if your mom and dad decide to drink, get in behind the wheel of a car, then I will make it my business, mm -hmm. okay? But I don't think there's any program that's 100% out there, okay? But I think what our program, and we've evolved as well, is that it's not just that you know, say no message anymore. We're not just wrapped around the drug message. We're, but most importantly, it's our interaction with the kids. It's a positive interaction. That's what we always want. I, to me, that's the crux of our program. You know, if I've got a fourth grader come up to me and say, I can't wait to be in fifth grade so I can take DARE, well, that's something that's very positive, so we're doing our job. Mm -hmm. Or last week, you know, Saturday at graduation, I got that little nod from a, you know, a senior who's graduating because there's one of my st students. It's something that's very positive. Mm -hmm. So to sure. me, it's, our program is working on that aspect. Mm -hmm. And again, with all of our students who are going through our DARE program, it's nothing more than a reinforcement of what the parents should be teaching them anyway. Okay, I have two questions. One, how many children in the Edwardsville School District are taking DARE in fifth grade? In fifth grade, it ranges from 23 to 25 classes. We're in 11 different schools. So it's roughly around 900, 950 students. It, it changes. Okay. And uh, I also wanted to ask you, you, in that scenario that you said that mom and dad are having a drink mm -hmm. at the table, at the right. dinner table, what's the state of the law if they offer or give to their children, right. underage children, right. alcohol? Right, and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. So you can't do that. You can't have the parties. You know, parents can't have parties for their seniors. No, no, so, I, I'm yeah, just talking, I, yeah. about, I'm talking right. about 
at dinner, or right. say it's Thanksgiving, right, right. say it's Christmas. Well, you know, I always tell them, you know, it's, it's New Year's Eve and Dad lets you take a sip of the champagne, okay? That's fine. That's not truly gonna affect their bodies at all, you know? But I'm, what I talk about is you start sneaking the beer out of the refrigerator and going down and talking and drinking it with your friend. Now mm -hmm. that starts affecting your, your body and your life. Well, my That's question it. is the state of the law. Right. Are parents allowed to get in Illinois? Right. Are they allowed to give no. their own children alcohol at, no. at, in their home? No. That's really? Mm -hmm. Okay. I wasn't sure what, right. what, what that is. Now, um, gangs, that's mm -hmm. another area that right. you uh, are, and violence, mm -hmm. all right? In the Edwardsville area, I mean, it's a little more upscale. You right. don't see a lot of tagging, mm -hmm. tagging meaning people uh, graffiti. Who spray paint right. graffiti. Mm -hmm. um, you don't see a lot of that in the Edwardsville, Glen Carbon, Hamill right. area. Mm -hmm. Are there gangs? Or no, I've, I haven't run over anything like that. It's, you know, involved in that. We talk more about just violence. More of it's bullying, as far as you know, kids. What's that kids. definition? Of, uh, what's your definition of bullying? It's unwanted behavior that is repeated again and again, uh, and it can be you know social bullying. It could be uh, cyber, verbal, uh, physical bullying, and we go through all that. And we talk about the five W's: the who, what, where, when, and why for the kids. So we don't have too much on the gang thing, uh, gang issue, but we do talk about the violence. And again, they they write that dare essay, and you know they make that choice not to use drugs, uh, alcohol, tobacco, or commit violence. Mm -hmm. Have you, well, I mean, let's face it, kids will get into fights. Oh, yes. The, um, is that, is that, what, what, how do you deal with that? I mean, mm -hmm. what, what, kid gets into a fight with somebody else. When I was young, right. that was not a criminal event. Is right. it now? Well, no, if it's at school, you know, obviously the school will deal with it first, but if it becomes such a problem that we have to deal with it, then we will deal with it on a legal basis. Um, but really, we haven't, on fifth graders, it's, it's not that prevalent that we have to deal with. There are occasions out there where students will bully other students, but uh, again, we will let the school district deal with that first, if it's within their uh, purview to do that. Well, uh, older children, mm -hmm. young adults, um, I mean, I, I guess what I'm asking is, when it, I mean, when did the police become involved when there is like physical altercation? Is it always, or are people allowed to just settle their differences and then okay, it's over? Now right. we go our separate ways. Well, and that's if we are notified or not. And again, if it's at the school, you know, they, the school has their own policies on dealing with that as right. well, whether they're going to be suspended or expelled or whatever it may be. Uh, again, if if it gets to the point where we need to be involved, obviously we'll take our report and work on that aspect of it. But with our, our D.A.R.E. program, um, with fifth grade, we don't have too much of an issue with that. We do try to talk about bullying, what it should look like. Don't be a bystander. If you see someone being bullied, you recognize that. You should be, you should report that. And report it to whom? Well, it depends on who, it, obviously mom and dad, teachers, principals, even, you know, their D.A.R.E. officer, whomever. So, do that trusted adult is what it, where they should be looking at. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and does anything come of that report? I mean, or it, it what comes of that Well, it report? depends. If, again, if it's at the school, then we would notify the school um, on that aspect of it. What about if it's just, you know, in regular life? Um, it depends on how, if it's just if physical or something like that, we can talk to the parents. Um, or if it's verbal, we, it depends on how bad it is. Here's another question, and, and this may seem strange to you, but I mean, again, when I was a child, mm -hmm. children were spanked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you misbehaved, you got it, sometimes with the belt. Right. Okay. Has that changed in today's world right. legally? What's, right. what's the legal that, status I, I, of that? Uh, that I'm not sure about on, on parental, uh, you know, consent on how they can, you know, discipline their child. Uh, that I'd have to look it up and, and deal with that aspect of it. But again, back to our program, we don't, we don't get into that at all. Okay. So we're down to the last five minutes mm -hmm. here. Um, I always tell the, the guest at this point, you know, have we, you got anything that you want to talk mm -hmm. about that we haven't covered so far? Let's go. Well, I think, again, we, our program, it's 10 weeks long. Our fifth grade program, our seventh grade program is eight, approximately eight weeks long. The students do have to write an essay. They do get a grade from their teacher. Uh, on an essay that they they write, they all have to read it out loud, and they uh, look at, go through what what they learned over the last ten weeks. 
from that aspect of it, it's, uh, it's, it's very positive. All the students read their essays. They're very good at you know, what they learn. I always kind of make sure that I look at little things and uh, I'll pick out what they've learned because a couple of them will read their essays at graduation. And to show you how important our graduations are is that at Cassins in Glen Carbon, we had seventh, fifth grade classes graduate. There were 350 parents show up. So it was very positive. So it was, it was huge, it was well attended. We had uh, several, we had a letter from the governor, from a congressman and the mayor. So it's very positive. So I think that uh, our program, which is really tied in with the district, has always been very positive. Mm -hmm. You mentioned seventh grade. Yes. We haven't even talked about seventh mm -hmm. grade. So why don't you just tell people what is the difference between the fifth grade mm -hmm. course and the seventh grade course? At fifth grade course, we, we show them the introductory video of what they're going to see again in seventh grade. And in seventh grade is taught at both middle schools, Liberty and Lincoln, by Officer Davis and Officer Renth. Uh, I teach in the parochial schools. Three years ago, we added our seventh grade program to the parochial schools, along with Officer Hunter, um, who teaches at another parochial at, at Trinity Lutheran. The seventh grade program, we don't talk a lot about drugs. By the time they're in seventh grade, they know that illegal drugs, alcohol, tobacco, they know how bad they are. They know how their effects on their body at that point. But we talk about situations that they're in. Um, one of them as an acronym is the REAL program, which is part of DARE. It's refuse, explain, avoid, and leave. So you're in a situation, how do you refuse it? How do you explain how to get out of it? How do you avoid it? And then how do you actually leave that situation you don't want to be in anymore? And there's several videos that we show throughout that process uh, of sixth graders, seventh graders, middle schoolers, and uh, freshmen in high school on their, how do they deal with that situation. And that's a lot of what the seventh grade program is about. Mm -hmm. And it does, it deals with norms, it deals with uh, how people perceive them, how do they perceive other people. And just briefly in the last minute or two that we have here, mm -hmm. um, are you familiar with some of the other districts in the Metro East where <clears throat> maybe they have more drug problems and whether DARE is having an effect there or not? Well, you know, honestly, several years ago when a lot of the federal and state funding dried up, a lot of the departments closed their, uh, you know, canceled their programs. Uh, I'm not too, I know Troy still has a DARE officer. I believe that O'Fallon may still have one, Fairview may have one. So I don't know. We don't, uh, I don't look at their program too much. I really want to concentrate on ours as much as possible to make sure that, you know, I give them the best information that I can so they can make those healthy choices. Right, and, um, and it's a good thing, too. I mean, uh, I, like I said before, I was just very surprised mm -hmm. at the number of comments of people who made it sound like <clears throat> trying to educate kids about the, <laughs> the negative aspects of yes. drugs mm -hmm. um, it, is a bad thing. You shouldn't right. be doing it. What, what's, what's wrong with you that you would do that? we got about 30 seconds here, so I'm going to ask just a very quick question. Do we discuss with children about things like taking legal drugs like OxyContin mm -hmm. that eventually leads to illegal drug use. We can't talk about that in the seventh grade program. Uh, there is a high school program, we're not into that, but seventh grade we could talk about that. If it's brought up and we do need to talk about that, we can talk right. about that as much right. and, and those effects as well. Fine. Thank you very much for Appreciate being it. with us today. Thank you. And to the audience, I've been speaking with uh, the Edwardsville police officer, uh, Chris Williams. He's the uh, head of the D.A.R.E. program, which is in the Edwardsville School District. Uh, you've heard a lot of information today. This program is going to be uploaded to YouTube. So if you want to show it to students or other parents, just go to, uh, to YouTube, look up Conversation with Lee Presser and uh, Chris uh, Williams, and uh, you'll find it. For those of you who are regulars, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Goodbye.